there is a 200 point almost 200 points rating difference between the two semi finalists magnus carlsen and abaso and in the first game of the semi final magnus carlsen was faced with the sicilian defense and magnus usually goes for the rosolimo he goes bishop to b5 and abaso plays e6 allowing takes takes breaking the pawn structure and b3 d6 e5 a nice little pawn sacrifice because after takes magnus doesn't take back then the game would be very tactical after queen g5 because g2 hangs and the knight hangs and if you take there it becomes uh, bad for white so magnus plays d3 controlling g5 now this is a way to get back the pawn but abaso plays f6 so it's a clean pawn sacrifice by magnus basically to break down the pawn structure and uh, peace development is not yet uh, possible for black he had to play f6 taking over the seat of the knight and it looks enough for a pawn. Magnus plays knight d2 because the bishop is anyway going to come to b2. And if you go knight c3, it can become the diagonal can be become a bit, bit of a problem. So and he wants to go to c4. That is an option. So knight h6, rook g1. This is a very interesting move. Magnus is preparing g4, controlling f5 and g5. If black ever castles short, bishop a6, g4 already. Even before Black shows intentions to castle, he plays g4, mainly controlling f5 for now. And in the future, this could become a useful pawn break. Knight f7, queen e2. Bishop e7 and bishop b2. So both sides are getting ready to castle. Abbaso has to decide, do I castle short and weather the storm? Or can I castle long? On the same side as Magnus probably will. Queen a5, he's keeping both options open for now. Magnus goes c4. Nice move, controlling the center, breaking this uh, bishop's path. And uh, preparing bishop c3 after getting support. So g5, h4, h6, and we have rook h1. Threatening, sort of threatening takes. Castles long and Magnus also castles long. Queen went back. Knight e4. So if you see the position, there's so many holes in the position for black. Because of the pawn structure, there are so many squares like e4 square, which is very weak. f6 is sort of a backward pawn. C6 can be a target. And this bishop is great. Right? Black's bishops are not doing so well. So Magnus is fine here with the pawn down. Abbasov takes, knight takes, and rook g8. Targeting g4. And now Magnus plays a very nice move. f4. Making this bishop even more better. And uh, he's planning to take here. So Abbasov takes. Now Magnus can get his pawn back. By knight takes, bishop takes, queen takes, and queen takes back. So Abbas, Abbas was okay with this position. It's still around even, comfortable for white. But uh, there is a pawn hanging here. And Abbas first plays bishop c8. So you can never defend that one. It's so anyway going to get taken. Rook e1, preparing rook e7. That would be a problem, right? Rook d6, attacking the queen. Queen takes f4. And now rook takes g4. The material is now completely equal. Both kings are on one side. White's pieces, however, seem very active. The bishop especially. Rook, queen. This rook and knight are not yet doing great. The knight needs to come to a better place. Right? Abbaso plays rook e6. Queen goes to d2. Knight e5. And now king c2. A very brave move. He is basically activating the king early. And also getting out of the back rank. So his pieces can go up. And he is defending d3 in case a queen comes to attack it. King b7. Abbaso does the same thing. And now rook e3. Queen e7 and knight f5. Queen comes to g5, takes. Rook g2, only moves rook e2, right? Defending. Now takes, takes, and takes. So a lot of exchanges happen. What is left is opposite color bishops and black is uh, a pin, right? So rook h5, defending the bishop. Queen goes to f7. And now queen went out of the pin, keeping it uh, a battery. This was actually a mistake. Here, Abbaso had a winning move, which is not easy, but it was in the spirit of the position. Can you find out what Abbaso could have played? Black to play and get a great position. Abbaso played rook to g6, but he could have played queen to f1. What's the point of queen f1? He's preparing rook g6, basically. Rook g6, rook g2 is a threat. And uh, rook g6, rook g1 is also a threat. And if the bishop moves away, queen a1 can also come. So this is now 
difficult it is. So, for example, if king b2, just rook g6. And the position is just uh, great for black. How do you defend? If you play bishop g3, just rook takes. Because queen takes, there's a tactic. Rook hangs over there. So these ideas are there in the air. So, queen f1 is a very uh, annoying move to face. If you play normal move like a3, still rook g6 comes. And how do you defend this? Again, bishop g3 doesn't do enough because a rook takes. And if you play something like bishop back to b2, thinking you're controlling, then rook e1 can come. Oh, rook e2 is a threat. Oh, the bishop can't move. It's pinned. Rook e2 is a threat if the bishop moves. So what do you do for Magnus? If you have Magnus in this position, you can just hold on with queen d2. But then, okay, rook g6 or rook e7. Rook g6 will come. And here, if you play rook h2 to stop rook g2, Rook g1 can come. And the position is again great. Queen b1 is a threat. And then when king moves, rook c1 will come. And it will be mate. Almost mate. You will get the queen. So it would have been winning for Abbasov if he found queen f1. He had uh, 9 minutes on the clock. Both of them are related to time pressure. And here Abbasov played rook g6, which is like a missed win. And now Magnus plays bishop f4, stopping queen f1 idea. Queen f1 was now very clearly a threat. Here, Abbasov played rook f6 back. So, Abbasov could have again created some problems with queen g7, trying to come in. Queen g7 threatening rook g2, that's one threat. And after queen g7, if bishop d2, queen again jumps in. And now there's no way to save a2 properly. If you play a4, the king becomes even more weak. So, that was a possibility for Abbasov, but Abbasov went for rook f6. And now Magnus plays bishop e3. Bishop f5 and Magnus takes the c pawn. He's now a pawn up. But Abbasov was counting on this uh, attack on d3. He believed his pieces were active enough that you can't defend this so easily. How do you defend it? If you move the queen, the rook hands, right? If you move the queen to e2, still bishop takes. And when you take back the rook hands, there are, uh, he was counting on this threat to be a big threat. But you know what Magnus Carlsen just does? He calmly plays king c3. That must have been quite a shock to Abbasov. So he took two minutes and he plays king c3, two and a half minutes. Imagine counting on this threat and then your opponent just sidesteps it with, with king c3. He's just uh, allowing bishop d3, but it won't be with a check, which means Magnus can do whatever he wants after that. So, for example, here if Abbasov plays bishop takes d3, then Magnus was planning bishop takes a7. And now if king takes, it's a mate. Queen check, king moves, and rook. A5 mate. So king can't take, which means the queen is anyway going to jump in. And if you play a move like, what do you do here? Queen b8 is a big threat, right? Queen b8 is a mate threat. You play rook f8, rook a5 anyway comes and pieces are going to crawl in. So this was Magnus' idea. To meet bishop takes d3 with bishop a7. So Abbasov played uh, rook e6. What was his correct move? He had to play queen e8 defending and using the queen to come here. Okay, so rook e6 and now Magnus plays rook h4. Magnus could also already, already have played bishop a7 but he is uh, just keeping his rook out of the queen's touch so his queen can move and still you can't take here. This time it's not that obvious because bishop takes, if king takes, there is rook d4 and now the bishop's hanging. So if you go back, then rook d7 comes and the attack is too strong. Is there a better... Yo, queen c7 is even stronger. Yeah, queen c7 is going to be mate. King a6 and queen c8. And the rook will jump in at the right moment. King c5. b4 is mate, right? Yeah, b4. Queen a7, b4, everything is mate. So, still you can't take the bishop. Let's go back. So, rook h4. It's a nice move. It keeps the pressure on Abbasov. Abbasov plays bishop g4. Removing ideas of rook d4. He has... Uh, given up on the idea of taking on d3 because there's no point. It's just a pawn. It doesn't get anything more. And now he's playing on this rook being entombed a little bit over here. Here Magnus plays bishop takes a7. Here apparently queen g7 is the correct move. Basically keeping an eye on the bishop and keeping an eye on c7. Because then after queen g7 when king moves, if king, if king moves, Oh, king can't move there because rook e2. If king moves up, then the king can take. So, basically, uh, queen g7 
now king can't go to b4 which is what happened in the game uh, the king b4 move happened in the game after the queen f6 check so the difference here is now black can take the piece and uh, black is actually better so there is no queen c7 that's the point so that's the difference between the move queen g7 and the move abaso played queen f6 this would have been a multi purpose move defending this defending this and giving a check now king went to b4 and here it is completely winning for magnus one more point to understand is after queen g7 so king won't move bishop will have to come back and position is still even it's opposite color bishops two pawns up but white king is not that safe but yeah queen f6 bishop takes happened and uh, yeah, sorry bishop takes queen f6 happened and now just king b4 how far, how long oh magnus got oh he he got a lot of time after this because he they both reached time control here so he had enough time to think and he played king b4 and now rook e5 but just pawn d4 the bishop is also hanging here right and uh, can you take the bishop here if you take here what would have happened will the king be safe he'll just take back and it's still winning still a winning position for white but yeah magnus goes for d4 and now queen check pawn c5 still if you take here the rook is hanging now and now you can't uh, if you move the rook there is queen b8 it's going to be mate so you can't move the rook which means you are going to lose more material you're going to lose an exchange so that was a nice comeback sort of game by magnus as in it was just one chance for abaso abaso missed one chance that was sort of a big chance when uh, queen f1 was played by magnus carlson sorry queen h2 was played by magnus carlson this was the one mistake uh, magnus played in this game but abaso did not punish him if abaso had played queen f1 we would have been talking about a completely different story story here but yeah uh, he missed it and magnus went on to convert with a plum so now abaso is in a must win situation in the second game and it's not going to be easy against the world number 1